mean, I think the overall project is one, to really study and understand the south branch of the river and to understand the factors that are influencing it as well as its effect on the surrounding neighborhoods. And I think a big part of the studio has been spent just on kind of that analysis and gathering that understanding. And then the second part is to begin to rethink, you know, what the river means to Chicago moving forward and what it means to the development of all the communities along the river. I really enjoyed just kind of walking around one of the last days in Chicago. Some of us just walked for hours around all the neighborhoods that were near the river and kind of being on the ground and understanding the relationship and seeing the barriers, the infrastructural barriers um, to relating to the river and what the fabric was like around it was kind of invaluable for for coming back and then looking at things from like a plan view and like on the map and, and understanding what that really looks like on the ground. I mean you can only get so much of a perception just from looking at maps and aerial photographs and pictures but the fact that we actually got to canoe the river, I mean that was way cool. We took a canoe trip and um, getting to really understand what neighborhoods the river went through and what it touched and a human scale of the river. Nice. Not just what the river is, what the river means running through the city, but how does that affect the, uh, the adjacencies and how can we leverage those adjacencies to actually improve the river. There's kind of a give and take. Uh, to me it's not just about making the river a beautiful park, it's more about making the river uh, a way for the community surrounding it to perform better or to be maybe more productive within the overall city. I mean, at least one of my perceptions is that the river is awesome but nobody seems to really know about it, or nobody seems to really think that, or know that there's a river there, so. It, it, it seems just wholly undeveloped. It's not giving value back to the communities around it in any way. In fact, it doesn't, it, 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 uh, it almost disappears in the same way that a buried highway disappears. So you can be walking around, along the river edge, and you won't per perceive the, the river. Well, the river itself is a public space, but the area along the river um, is for the most part not and so access to the river itself is very limited and uh, people's awareness of the river and enjoyment of the river is limited as well. Certainly I think everybody would like to see it um, become a cleaner uh, waterway, a more accessible, more pedestrian, um, friendlier, more human scaled uh, waterway. I think we'd also like to see the river expand. I think we'd like to see um, very specific types of development along the river. Um, the kind of residential development that can really utilize the, the largely vacant uh, river as a transportation corridor. Um, something that can draw people uh, out from the, out from the um, expansion into the suburbs. It's really nice because everyone is working, we're working collectively on a large, on a big scale and then everybody's picking something out individually. This studio I really feel like everyone's working together on one problem which is really nice um, and that each of our projects really fit into this collective whole. A constant dialogue and a constant interaction going on between all of us and again it, it comes back to this idea of you begin to see how your own, you know, quote unquote small project is working within a much greater fabric and a much greater framework that could really look at revitalizing this entire corridor as opposed to specific areas along the river. We're all dealing with the same things about water quality and access and perception and the economy and development and we're doing it all from, from different angles. So um, We've spent a lot of time talking as a group and I think that everyone is on the same page in terms of what we want the outcome to be but I think it's kind of the collaging of different scales is something that's kind of beautiful. Uh, it's kind of allowing us to explore our own interests and, and push those forward however we like. 
So at the end I feel like even if each person has his, its own projects, it's going to be like a collaborative work between that and also the freedom. Oh, I feel very free to propose. I feel almost like a thesis project. It's an interesting, like, sort of retrospective thing for me, figuring out, like, where my sort of background and interests fits in with, like, within a water design discipline. So I think that that studio, in a sense, has, like, been a really interesting exercise in and of itself. A catalog of, or an index of, you know, how these disciplines really aren't that different. And I think that's pretty cool. I've only taken studios with other architects, so this semester to be involved with urban planners and landscape, Architects is a very different feeling. Um, I'm trying now con to consider how my building lies in a grander scope, which I I like to think that I've always done before. But speaking with the urban planners, they've got other ideas about how my building should be integrated into the city fabric. When we first started, he had given us three sites specifically to look at: um, the CSX site, the post office, and Wolf's Point. And people have seen the river and run with all of its issues, kind of, and I, me specifically, I'm like, I'm looking at a whole industrial quarter, which doesn't encompass any of those three original sites, and a couple people are doing that too. Um, we all kind of saw bigger issues and uh, zoomed out a bit. What are the infrastructures that are allowing access into the site? How can we use the existing infrastructure, the existing roads, the abandoned rail lines? can actually use these infrastructures to start pushing goods and services and information back out of the site. So we kind of have to come outside in so we can go back outside. And then bringing people to the river both for recreational purposes and educational purposes as a way to uh, make people more aware of their uh, impact on the environment both with their consumption of energy and material goods. Stormwater management, I think in Chicago they have a tendency of kind of putting everything under the ground with the tarp system and um, not really caring about porosity or putting water back into the ground and I think that that's something that could be leveraged. Taking sort of what I've been calling blank parcels, these, these plots of land that are immediately adjacent to the river and um, somehow incorporating them into this CSX process that I'm developing of, of aquaculture and fish farming. Um, so taking those, those small self-similar parts and aggregating them will have local differences, but it'll, I hope it will achieve an overhaul like cohesion. So I, I realized that um, for any of these cool design proposals to take shape, um, they, they simply can't happen unless, unless the entire area um, gets rezoned um, from a very, very uh, large-scale standpoint. Um, um, uh, the, the city really needs to reapproach the way that they think about the river and reconceptualize it as a corridor. Um, the, the whole goal here is to make the river uh, an asset to the city, something that gives back to the communities around it. Um, developing the river as a point of centrality, not not a back backyard or back door to, to industry.